There's a smart new website that will change the way you invest using social media. Like Folio. Here to explain a team of brothers, Andy and Landon Swan, of Like Folio. And they've always been building out great technology at the intersection of social and trading. Powered by unique social data. Analyzed by legendary traders. The Like Folio broadcast starts right now. The wind was blowing from the left. On the ass for oh, <laughs> I can't even tell this story right, man. On the asphalt courts in Scottsdale. And we're out there at a bachelor party. And um, we've been playing some ball. And two of the guys, uh, kind of the big timers that like to talk a bunch of junk and get competitive after the game, decide they're going to have a little three-point contest. Between each other. Nice. And um, they're both. Does this include you? N- not at this point. <laughs> so I said, hey, once they started talking money, they had a wager on. I said, hey, you going to let you going to let me in this bet? And they said, OK. And you could tell they hadn't even really thought about that. I would want to participate because I'm a big man. Right. Biased. Well, anyway, um, they said, yeah, you can come in. And this is one of those, you know, outdoor courts, double rim, uh, chain net. White men can't jump style. Yeah, a little bit of, uh, yeah, exactly. Down on the beach. Nostalgia just got me right there. Yeah. Uh, wind is blowing. Um, anyway, long story short, one of them makes two out of 10. The other one makes three out of 10. And then I hit three of my last four to go four out of 10 to win it. Boom. Nice. You know, to pick it up. Um, the reason this story is relevant today is because one of these guys was a big time executive for Nike. Cool. And so he was very upset with me because my shirt happened to be a, with this big block Adidas logo on the front of it. Mm-hmm. Right. So he was very upset with me. And I think it really got under his skin. I think it might have intimidated him. <laughs> that was all part of the plan, right? That's all part of the plan. So there's two lessons there. Number one is don't get so bought into a brand that something as simple as a logo can intimidate and undermine your confidence. <laughs> the second is... That's a great lesson. Never count out the big man from the top of the key. It's like Big Smooth. Big Smooth, something we learned on Monday night. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, Come on. coming down the court trailing, nobody sees him, little, little dish pass out, that was boom, amazing. right at the buzzer. Unbelievable. That was amazing. Um, that was amazing. Yeah, that was so cool. And um I guess I, I guess there's a third lesson too, just for those li- those who might be gamblers among the group, which I'm sure is a lot. Um when someone asks to get in on a bet, don't let them. <laughs> He's already that's won. True. He's already won. Unless they're just a, a degenerate. Yeah, that's which, true, which I play that part pretty well too. Yeah, so I would let you in. <laughs> I was looking at the, um, speaking of our audience, I was looking at the like folio, um, demographics data. Our biggest section of, um, demographic is people net worth a million dollars or more. Really? Really? Yeah. I like that. That's pretty interesting. Not a majority, but that's the biggest section in the breakdown. It's like plurality. Yeah. Like 19, 20%, something like that. Holy cow. But it spread out pretty nice. Men, women was like 60, 40, which I liked. Uh, like that we've got ladies listening to the show. Absolutely. And, um, you have anything on age? Age was, it was kind of crazy because there's a lot of young people. So 20 to 34 was pretty hot. And then also 55 plus was pretty hot. Okay. That, that middle area were not really hitting too well. Hmm. So, um, that's like our age. Our age is not represented. Yeah, we're not hitting our own age group. Right. right. That's funny. Right. <laughs> it's random. <laughs> um, so that's my story. It got me thinking about Nike, um, Under Armour, uh, Adidas, all the kind of what you think of as athletic wear companies. Absolutely. Footwear um, apparel. So I also had a cool conversation with the guy, uh, his Nike exec again, and um we we were talking about what we do for a living and I told him about like Folo and he said, eh, I bet Twitter talks about Under Armour more than Nike, don't they? 
I, I pulled out the like folio app, brought it up. I was like, nope. According to this, um, you know, Nike is talked about 21 times more than Under Armour brands. And his face kind of lit up and he was just so impressed because he was like, yeah, we're kind of, we're pretty much Under Armour's about 5% of our size. So when I said 21 times, he was like, damn, this, this stuff is real. This social data is real. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. It got me thinking about, um, about doing a, this show. And so I put out a poll yesterday. Which company's brands do you think get talked about most on Twitter? Nike, Under Armour, or Adidas? This was on, under the Like Folio Twitter handle. And so the results came in. It was our biggest um, response yet. We had 272 votes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, 55% said Nike, which is correct. 33% said Under Armour, which is actually third of the group. And only 12% said Adidas, even though Adidas brands is right there with Nike. It's just a couple spots behind on the like folio top 50. And part of the reason I think is because people don't really understand what all Adidas owns. Sure. A lot of the responses were, where's Reebok on the list? UFC, Reebok, all this type of stuff. And I said, you know, that's, that's included in Adidas because Adidas owns Reebok. So I, I thought that was really cool the way that broke down. I think that Under Armour is getting a lot of attention because of the endorsement deals that they have. Steph Curry. Steph Curry is such a huge deal for them. Jordan Spieth. Um, they got some other ones going that are pretty good. I don't know how I mean, is that worth it? Are they getting that much out of it is the question. But um, they're getting a lot of attention, that's for sure. And a lot of people think that Under Armour – is bigger than it is because of that. When I go watch my friend's um, eight-year-old play ba- basketball, all the little kids have the super colorful Under Armour basketball shoes. Yeah. So I, I'll have to, you know, I have to guess that Steph Curry is rising their revenue. I haven't looked at the at the numbers on footwear, but I think the footwear revenue is definitely benefiting from the Steph Curry situation. Yeah, for sure. The the other cool thing that Under Armour owns is that My Fitness Pal app. Yeah, I've used that a bunch of times. I think a lot of people use that app. It's, I did not know they owned that. I, I used didn't, that. I didn't either. Yeah, I think they wow. bought it. It's um, the number one rated fitness app in the app awesome. store. No, it's amazing. It is an amazing app. And I guess Under Armour yeah, has I that tied in. That's interesting. They've also got Map My Run. So they're getting into even with apps. that, they're that far behind on brand mentions. Uh, so, Matt, my run. Have you seen the the pictures that people oh, draw? Those are cool, yeah, yeah. The little gifs or gifs. Some, whatever you some say. can be dirty though. I've seen some dirty ones. Oh, they run in a specific pattern. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, that's a lot of motivation to run right there. <laughs> so, so those are the brands that uh, <laughs> that Under Armour owns. Um. So I've got My Fitness Pal, Matt, my run. Matt My Run, and then just Under Armour is pretty much what most people talk about. Sure. It's kind of its own brand. Nike is kind of cool because it's got the Jordan brand, number two. Jordan brand's huge. Yeah. Jordan brand went down last night in North Carolina. No doubt. Yeah. Saw Jordan kind of up there a little upset in the crowd after that. I, would, I mean, that was, a, that was a great shot. But um, also, people on that, they you know, they talk about, the Nike store a lot. People love going to the Nike store. It's a big draw. But, um, you know, Adidas is the one that's really got sort of the most. Well, don't, don't forget about Hurley. Yeah, Hurley. Hurley's. The, the skateboards? It's like a surf, surf swimwear okay, cool. type thing. Active wear stuff. Yeah, but mostly focused on um, surf-related type style. Gotcha. But Hurley was a pretty big acquisition for them. Well, that's cool. Uh, Adidas. It's got some pretty cool diversity. I mean, Adidas and then Reebok. I mean, that used to be a big name. Oh, sorry. Back to Nike. We we forgot Converse. Yeah. I mean, Converse. That's... The Chuck I mean, Taylors. So Nike's got Jordan Brand, Beast, Nike, of course. Yep. Converse. Yep. Hurley. And I'm sure we're missing a couple. Very nice. And then Adidas also owns TaylorMade. Yep. Reebok, TaylorMade. Golf clubs. That's huge. That's probably what's throwing people off with Adidas. Yeah, and honestly, just a lot of people talk about Adidas. It's just the brand Adidas. Um, 
gets more mentions than um, Under Armour by a factor of about 30 times. I'd be curious. Wow, wow 30x. Yeah. I'd be crazy. curious how much of that is the Kanye West and Kardashian factor. Because Kanye That's West true. has been signed by Adidas. He's creating his own sneakers. They're He's creating his own apparel. It's making huge headlines everywhere. People hate it. People love it. And you know how haters talk on Twitter. Yep, a you lot. Know, a mention's a mention, though, when mm-hmm. it comes to Adidas. Yep, that's right. And the then, um, the sentiment for all three companies is phenomenal. 95% plus positive for all three. Yeah, they're very popular. People Did like you say 95? 95% plus for all three. Wow. So wow. these are powerful companies. Um, that's determining- nothing new. They've been that way for... Pretty much all the data we've got. Yeah, let's. They've always been very popular. Let's hear about the data because I think it's cool that we're, you know, I'm not really trying to figure out which company uh, is going to perform best over the next week or month or whatever. Um, I just kind of, it's such an interesting topic when you've got three super popular uh, companies like this in the same niche that you can just kind of inspect. They have, you know, multiple brands. So, Landon, what do you see when you look back at the data or across uh, like folio data? Well, when you compare them, um, I think you'll you'll see the story that you told that uh, you know Nike and Adidas both are a lot larger than Under Armour um, from a uh, a brand tag or just a mentions perspective. Um, from purchase intent perspective, um, Nike is about eighteen times as much as Under Armour. Adidas is about eight times as much as Under Armour. So people are talking about buying uh, Nike and Adidas far more than they're talking about buying Under Armour, which I think shows through in the revenues for each. Um, Nike's got about $30 billion in revenue, Adidas 18, and Under Armour's four. So they're very differently sized companies, um, and it, it shows through in the, the uh, social media data. Cool. Um, you see when you look at the... Um when you look at the the historic data of those three companies in terms of uh, purchase intent data or sentiment or anything like that, are there any outlier moments for any of these companies? Just looking backwards, Landon's looking at the charts right now, but it's just sort of a steady creep up for a company like Under Armour. Um, yeah, it's for Under Armour. They've actually, if you want to talk about purchase intent, they've been fairly flat. Um, coming up lately, but um, not a lot has been going on in Under Armour's purchase intent mentions. Uh, brand mentions have been going up somewhat, uh, but I think people are talking more about the brand than they are talking about buying the products. So maybe that uh, you know goes back to their marketing being more effective about getting people talking, but not maybe getting people buying or at least talking about oh, buying. That's interesting because when you look at the stock performance of the last four or five years, Under Armour has run away with it. Yeah. Well, they had a great three-year uptrend. And then October 22nd, 2015 earnings actually pushed it below that really strong, uncontested uptrend support. And once it busted below there, it kind of struggled to the downside. Uh, currently, for the past few months, we've seen range-bound trading between around 80 and 85, so pretty tight range for the past few months. So that, that really strong uptrend that we saw over those three years is over, and we'll just have to see what how things look, how the market responds on um, April 21st earnings, the report before, for Under Armour? before the opening bell. Yeah, for Under Armour. So that's only a couple of weeks away. Yes. Yeah, we got earnings season right around the corner. Alcoa opens up next week on the 11th, and then we get tons and tons of earnings coming in. I might have to trade Under Armour then. Could be interesting. I'm kind of. Uh, it's wound up. It doesn't. It doesn't know which direction it wants to go. But it's gonna. I think it, it has, could move big. I think it could move big in one one or two directions. What's interesting about Under Armour is that people really like talking about the stock itself. They talk about that as much as they talk about Nike. And about as much as they talk about Nike stock, yes. Oh, wow. So, and and the size of the company is you know, it's like five Nike's like five or six times as big as far as uh, market cap, but they talk about trading Under Armour about the same amount. 
and hardly anyone talks about trading Adidas. Maybe that's because it's the it's a foreign. It is. It's an ADR. Okay. There's no options available for it. It's not the most liquid. Uh, it's it's home is the German stock exchange. Right. So the only way you can trade in the U.S. is via the ADR, which ticker symbol is A D D Y Y. Definitely not the most liquid. Definitely not the highest volume situation. So I can see that you know playing out. Wow. So it's kind of like Under Armour was this darling of the retail investor had a huge run now it's now it's winding up to do something yeah it's pulled back and we're kind of seeing that there's maybe not as much um product buying as there is marketing hype yeah i would be cautious just based on Mm. our purchase intent data of under armor i might just get in on i might have to bet against them on earnings we're gonna take we'll have to take a look at it right before earnings you know, Nike, Nike seems to be taking a bit of a breather yeah. too. When you look at the stock chart, it's it reported March twenty second, so a couple weeks ago, and it actually beat EPS estimates, but still had a bearish response to the earnings event. And since then, it's kind of taken a little bit of a breather after putting in all time highs right near seventy. So it's it's just kind of taking a breather. Under Armour's taking a breather. Adidas is powering higher. That thing is trucking towards its all-time high of sixty-five. It's currently it's intimidating everyone. It's it's bringing everyone. I'm really impressed with some of the products, their footwear products that they've been putting out. Yeah, of the three, Adidas has the strongest social media data uh, by far. It's it's pushing upward. Nike is. It's almost like you just described the stock, but the Nike data that we're looking at, the brand mentions and the purchase (laughs) intent. Uh, they've both ran up and have kind of stalled, but they're at very high points for the stock, for Nike. Adidas, on the other hand, just continues to make higher highs for uh, the number of brand mentions and as well the purchase intent. Under Armour, kind of flat, maybe pulling down a little bit. So, All right. I'm 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 pair trading. I'm going long Adidas and short Under Armour. I like that pair trade. I don't like touching Nike here. It's just too much of a beast. 100, yeah. 100 billion market cap. I don't want to bet against them. I don't want to bet at against all. them either. Phenomenal company. They are strong. So here's a here's a fun metric. Yeah. Um, revenue per employee for each company. Oh, I love this metric. Four hundred ninety thousand revenue per employee in Nike. Right around three hundred thousand in both Adidas and Under Armour. Wow. So Nike is efficient. Nike is crushing them on the efficiency side of things, and that's just probably because they're so much more established. And you know, I, it's just they're just a beast. Yeah, but, you know, we talked about this before. I think the um, Nike's got around, not quite twice the revenue of Adidas, but it's got um, around four times the profit. So that goes to talk about their efficiency. Yes, it sure does. The other thing that um, came up in this conversation with uh, this this guy that works at Nike was the prob one of the problems Under Armour could be could have. This is just a guess, but um, on his part, but it was very interesting. One of the problems they could be having is they don't really have anything close to what Nike has in terms of research and development for building out the next generation of footwear and things like that, where they you know you can get good margins. Like they they were a shirt and apparel company for a long time before they got into this. And so yeah, there's 60% apparel, 30% footwear versus 50% footwear, 40% apparel at Nike. Yeah. I think, um, so that's another concern is that maybe they don't have sort of that, that back office that can crank out the product after product cycle and that sort of thing. Um, so I kind of like that. I think I came into the, here thinking, you were going to sit on your hands. I was going to sit on my hands, but I'm not real good at that. And once you start hearing information, you're like, I can, I can trade that. Yeah. <laughs> I can make that shot. Um, so just keep two things in mind with that pair trade. Okay. First thing to keep in mind is the, um, lack of true liquidity in the Adidas AD, ADR. So, so, you know, consider sizing down on the overall pair trade. You know, yeah. the amount of capital, if you okay. normally put a hundred grand on a pair trade total, you know, maybe cut that in half. Okay. And um, the beta on Adidas is 1.15, and it's 1.5 on Under Armour. So there's enough of a discrepancy there where you may want to take that into consideration. So you want to buy more Adidas dollar-wise exactly. than, than you short Under Armour. 
What's uh, Adidas's? What's their stock price right now? They're currently fifty eight dollars. Ticker symbol A D D Y Y. Fifty eight. Under and- Armour ticker symbol U A is eighty five. Okay, so if I'm gonna, sh- I'll, I'll do. I'll so just there are do mirror it images. Fifty eight, eighty five. Yeah, maybe it's I'll just sign, man. I'll just do it light. I'll do um short a hundred under armor and buy a hundred and fifty Adidas. That could be my trade. Maybe yeah. It's about right. That seems seems close. Somewhere in there. Hundred and thirty five Adidas. Something like that. Cool. Well, we got something to do now. I was hoping <laughs> we would. I was hoping we'd be able to trade this week. Um and those who are listening, don't forget when we're talking I know we mentioned this earlier, we're talking about Adidas or Nike. Um, or even Under Armour, we're talking about all of the products and brands that those those companies own. So we're not just limiting to the specific, um, the, when we talk about the data, we're not talking about the specific brand Nike, we're talking about it and all the brands that it owns. Yeah, that's what Like Folio does, and that's what sets us apart. We're not talking about what people say about the stock very much, because that's in the rearview mirror. We're talking about what customers on the ground are saying about the brands and products that these companies own. And so... A uh, quick update on Tesla. Um, we had, wow. yeah, big time sales, um, big time pre-orders, I guess you'd call it. Big time refundable pre-orders. Right. Refundable pre-orders. A lot of delivery questions linger. We're going to wait a couple weeks before we do a full like folio update on Tesla. I'm comfortable with my position in the stock short at 238 um, after such a crazy big event. Uh, the stock has gotten a nice move up, but it doesn't scare me at all. But from a um, like folio update perspective, we want to wait a couple weeks, let it all shake out, see how people start reacting to the delivery estimates, see how people start reacting to being on a wait list, that sort of stuff before we publish anything about it. But um, just want everyone to know, you know, we are we're we're cool with where it's at right now. And yeah, congratulations to Elon. Elon was going hard on Twitter, he running, running Twitter that freak. stock price up, man. <laughs> yeah. He did, you see, did you see where he's going to give the first person in line at every retail location? So the people that waited in line before the unveil, the person that was number one in line at each of their retail locations gets a Tesla Model 3 for no further expense on top of their $1,000 deposit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> This, you, this is announced after awesome. the fact. Do so you know how crazy it's going to be next time they release something? Oh, yeah. There'll be people there a week before or more. Nuts. But that won't work. It won't work twice. It might. He, he won't get something the first guy next time. <laughs> He'll change it up. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. And then the other, the other cool thing is they aren't the, – the delivery is not based on where you were in line. It's based on where you were in line in your region. So, or in your state. So basically, if I was the 11,500th person to reserve, but the second person in Kentucky, then I get pushed way up in the queue. Gotcha. He wants them across the country. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes a lot of sense because otherwise... Time I'm, zones would crush you, right? Well, time zones, yeah. And then hey, are, are there different times for different reason regions? It was all the same day, right? Yeah, it was all at the same time. So is it more than time zone or what? No, no I think it's, it's just an awareness thing. He wants yeah. he wants, he wants his creation the all okay. over, you know, spread out. And they have they're doubling their supercharger capacity to like seven thousand. Um, so he wants people to be taking advantage of the superchargers all over the United States, so that okay. that infrastructure build out wasn't for nothing. Would be my guess. Yeah, because otherwise, um, another it's, thing it's a we hype can machine. See, yeah, we can see in the day in in this data is a lot of people that. California is huge on Teslas. It, so, and it would be, so big. It would be all over the place. We saw a Tesla Model X in uh, Scottsdale. The first time I saw one on the in um, real life. So that was that was super cool. It looked sweet. It looked smaller than I thought, but I bet it's big on the inside. Anyway, get the app, like Folio, in your app store. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And... Make I mean, tell a friend, too. This is good stuff. People are making money, and we appreciate the participation in our polls and, and interacting with us on Twitter. Make sure you follow us. Hit us up anytime. We try to be as responsive as possible. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.